so miracles. The great thing about miracles is that I think we can understand them both as supernatural and also kind of natural sometimes. Depends on the miracle, of course. We get two of them today. Um, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stick with the one of the feeding five thousand. Cool. Now, I'm gonna give an example because, like, think about the resurrection, right? It's commonly accepted, and this is across cultures, both ancient and our modern scientific ones, that um, people do not get resurrected from the dead, and it would take something like super natural intervention to make that happen. But at the same time, I think we all know that death brings new life. It's part of what it is to be alive. We look around us, we look in us, we look at our families, we look at everything in the natural world that we experience, and we know that <coughs> resurrection, that death brings new life, is in fact a truth that is part of what it is to be alive. So today's story is great for that because um, we have this wonderful miracle of the feeding of 5,000 people. And it starts from this place of, um, how could we ever do this? This is impossible. And we have Jesus. And now, if you're like me, you've heard this story from one of the different gospels preached about a thousand times, right? Mm -hmm. It's the greatest hit. It's an it, and then come, <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> and it's a, we get a number of versions of it. So, um, in fact, we don't even get all of them in the lectionary. There's so many of them. But there's a couple ways that I'm guessing you've already heard it preached. Because, of course, Jesus has the power to turn these five loaves and these two fish into enough to feed this crowd. And that's definitely part of how this story is being portrayed to us. It's a real miracle. It is from the supernatural realm. But I'm guessing that you've also heard it talked about as a natural miracle. Because what if the real miracle isn't that the bread was supernaturally increased and the fish supply but what if, in fact, what happened was once Jesus accepted and blessed what this one boy gave in this overwhelming situation, the people there dug back into their pockets and what they had held back, what they had had inside their robes all along, they now had the courage and the trust to maybe be generous with and to share. Maybe they didn't even realize that that well of generosity could be inside of them until they had seen it in this little boy. Now, I like both of those interpretations, but today I want to focus on this second one because um, I could not have picked a better reading for today if I had had the choice. And I do not have the choice. This is what was in the lectionary for today. But today is also our community building meeting Sunday. And um, if you haven't picked it up yet, part of our, pra our um, practice for that is we will use our uh, sermon time to do some spiritual community building, and then we will do the practical stuff in our, um, in our gathering afterwards in the parish hall. So in, in April, we reflected on St. Philip the Congregation. And we had a chance to think about some of the ways, some of the things that we as a church, as a spiritual community, might have to offer our wider community, the people out there who are hungry. They're hungry for food, in spiritual food. They're hungry for, um, for actual feeding. There's so much need out there. And we divide it up into head, heart and hands, and I put the sheets on the door so you can see them as you come in and be reminded, but we discovered that we have a lot to offer as a church. So much, in fact. So today I want um, to ask us to look inside ourselves and to think about what do we have inside our pockets 
that um, that we already share here in this congregation and the world around us, or that maybe is in there, it's been in there all along, but maybe we haven't had a chance to share it, or maybe it's something that we has been in there and we've been sharing, but we want to share it in a new way. <laughs> now, over and over again, I hear we're a small church and the need is huge. Kind of sound like those disciples, I think. How can we feed them all? But I also have to say that miracle of the loaves and the fishes and the feeding of the 5,000, I see it happen here at St. Philip's all the time. Yep. The last time I saw it, yesterday. That feast, that beautiful feast that everybody brought together, the, the food, the salads, the decorations, the love, the flowers, the people who, gathered, who, who came to us, some who haven't been with us for a long time, um, some who knew Bob from out in the community and were touched by him, but, um, but the, they, that, that was a loaves and fishes moment. Because I have been part of congregations that are, have five times or more our average Sunday attendance, and I haven't seen a piece like that. Um, so um, those miracles that we're thinking about here and the generosity and the sharing and the incredible gifts that we have here in this congregation, it's, it's huge. It's huge. So today I'm going to invite us to take some time to dig into our pockets and think about what our gifts are and what some of the gifts are that we might not be using. Um, can I, Tina, would you? Ooh, oh, like everybody, everybody needs, I don't know, like like five, six sticky notes. Pick different colors so it can be fun. And then <laughs> there are pencils. Oh, where are the colored? Oh, they're right there. I've been playing with them, so I mean, I can share. <laughs> I'll just take them around. Oh, okay, awesome. Thank you. Well, because you know, it's boring to listen to a sermon when it's when okay. black and white. And while Tina's doing that, I'm just gonna let you guys know what I'm asking you to do. Here's the eight o'clock, that's what the eight o'clockers did. Look at all those gifts. Um, so I'm gonna invite you to think about gifts in two ways. You can think about, um, think about some gifts that you have that you already share here at St. Philip's. And then you can think about some gifts that you might have inside of you that you're not sharing at the moment or you haven't shared in a while or even something that you don't even know if you have it as a gift but you'd kind of like to try it. An online congregation, just grab some paper and note these things down and we'll make sure that you get a chance to. Um, but just think of a couple of things. They can be head gifts, they can be heart gifts, they can be hand gifts, they can be any of those three things. But just take time to think about that. Mm -hmm. And um, the sticky notes are coming in around. And when you feel like you have um, your gifts. Oh, you have colors. <laughs> Steve has a multicolored pen. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this up at the front, and you can bring them forward. And just the line, the top is the gifts you, you have that you're already sharing, the bottom of the gifts that you like to share. And then Valerie and Tim, I invite you to fill these out and then take them with you. <laughs> <laughs> we will miss your gifts so much, yeah. but they go with you wherever you guys land, because you're those kind of people, right? <laughs> so, do please. All right, go ahead and take some a few moments. Does anyone have any questions about what we're doing here? Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna set this up. You guys, go ahead and think about what your gifts are. I got it. Can they see that? <clears throat> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I would love for you guys to, you know what, like write, I mean, sometimes gifts come in clusters that go together, but 
Right, fill as many sheets as you want. And there's more here if anybody starts feeling dejected because they didn't get enough to do right that. now. And if you would like to give them talents. Oh, oh, it's the, yes. the, the mind heart hand thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, scary deal. Can you give this but up? this is about you as opposed to about St. Philip's writ large. Does that make sense? Example, please. Um, for example, well, here, let's look at the eight o'clockers. Yeah, let's see what they did. <laughs> okay, so, um, oh, I know, um, uh, like, there's a person here who said that they have the gifts of fixing and repair, and that's something that they do already. Um, and then it says down here what they, what they have in their pocket that they haven't quite used is the gift to advertise or share our story. So there's one example. Um, oh, and then like for example, another person said flowers is something they already share, the gift of arranging flowers, and maybe um, the gift of healing uh, ministry is something they have in them, but that they haven't had a chance to share yet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll get this part here. So we're going with heart. Yeah, I did. This is just this was our. You can do any of these things. Okay. Well, but I were, I just want people to know gifts are things that we do. There are ways that we care, and there are skills that, like... Okay. Well, that, I have frumpy evangelism. I find people who need a church, and I pair them off with one, based on what they tell me, they, they want need and want in a church. Awesome. I, I, I help them find a home and tell them why they need one. <laughs> True. <Yeah. laughs> There's so many people that are going through hard things alone. Did you put your gift about humor in the second part? Oh, that's Maybe. true. Comedy. I forgot stand about that. comedy. Yes. I make people laugh. We don't oh, want I should stand up here so the camera can see me. Uh, I don't know whether that's like... to make sure the online congregation... You know, online congregation, it occurs to me that if you want, you can chat. write your gifts in the chat and then we'll put them on sticky notes for you. Very true. Would we put baking under heart or hands? It's hands. Oh, hands. It's a hand. It's the thing that you do. But baking comes from the heart. It does. You know, the eight o'clockers were. Uh, there was one person at eight o'clock that made sure they put all their things between all the categories. The categories are just there to remind us. <laughs> it's like, oh, gosh. Yeah, it's not a, a, not a, a, a rigid rubric. That's shall we true. Say. I find the joke in every church service. It's like if you don't find poverty in the Episcopal Church service, you're not paying attention. I occasionally do. Yeah. Do we have any online congregation people who have put stuff in the chat? Uh, nothing in the chat yet. Okay. Oh. I'm having fun with this. <laughs> Actually, this is probably Donna's, but I'm going to put it up. Vegan cookie. I'm going to put, I'm going to put Donna's name on this, too. So, actually, Tina, let's let everybody offer their own gifts. <laughs> well, she's better at it than I am. I know, but if you if it's something you feel called to, then you can put it up. But Okay. Because we could name everybody else gift all day, and we probably will do that at a different time. Okay. But I want to, right now, we're digging into our own pockets. Because people often, they, they don't always want to let show what's in their pockets. I make things that everybody can eat. Yay. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> Does anyone need me to come collect from them so they don't have to walk up? Greg, I'll grab yours. Are you, go ahead, Tina, you can do it. Yeah. Thank you, old sister. What, where do these go? Um, <clears throat> th those are uh, what we're doing. Hands? Yeah. Okay. Doing. Oh, and there were scouts, too. Oh. Yeah, Greg is so stepped in now that um, <coughs> Valerie's. Uh, yeah, my, north. my biological brother that he looks like is a scoutmaster, too. Oh, cool. Phil, <laughs> can I bring anything up for you? Thank you, Beverly. Can I bring something up for you, Phil? You sound perfect. Oh. I didn't know if Ricky's in order or something. 
This is what you have and what you could be better at. Yeah, these are things you're using already, and these are things that you might not, that you have in your pocket. <laughs> Trust you to cross the line. I, so, I feel like it's something we should all work on, but also something we have here in the lot. <laughs> I like the fact oh. that I used to teach that. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> For those that uh, were more Morris code uh, not uh, good at. Oh, here, you can put it right here, Beverly. What's that? You don't have to be Don't trip, though. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, well, that's true, too. Okay. There's a cup right there. This is my up and down box. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, I have some of those, too. All right. Did everybody, you can keep putting stuff if you want, but has everybody had a chance to put something up at the moment that they want? All right. Um, now, here's what I want to invite you all to do. Think of all the ones that you put up there and pick maybe one, or one from up here, one from down here. Um, and then if you would like, I invite you to share what those two, one or two things are, and why you, like where you found them, why you, why you thought, pulled them out of your pockets for today. Wait a minute, were we to put more than one of our gifts on the top? You, the idea is to do whatever came to you. Pick? What There's no right or wrong way to do this. <laughs> the line is for the line. Donna, this is spitballing. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, up here are all the things that the, all the gifts that you are already offering up. Uh huh. And now, and down here are some that might be sitting in your pockets that either you haven't exercised in a while, or you're thinking you might right. exercise in a new way, or you're only oh, just discovering yeah. them in yourself. To provide this because I do it at St. John's and I never do it at home. There you go. Well, go ahead. So right. but the question is, when we go up there and pick something, uh, is that somebody else's that we're picking? No, I want you to think about yours, and you don't have oh, to come up. Right. Just if, if there's one that you want to share with us, okay, okay. or two that you want to share with us and tell us why you picked them. Go ahead, Maddie. Um, so right in the middle of the line, on the orange one, I put love and kindness, uh -huh. which is something that I think um, a lot of people in this congregation have a lot of, and that... I feel like my family has greatly contributed to uh -huh. um, with the, the open door of the church. Yeah. Um, but I think it's something that we should always keep in mind as a, like a center or a core of our church. Yeah. And you're feeling that in yourself, especially. Yeah. And finding sometimes, a way to share that. Sometimes being loving and kind is very difficult. It can be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's also, I don't, it's not always a gift that people have. Like sometimes people, um, have you know they they have different ways of, of sharing feelings and 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 stuff but love and kindness is super important it's a skill yeah um yeah. the other one that I put is over in the um, light bulb section uh -huh. um, it's another orange one and it says connection between generations yeah. because I feel like I have been helping out a lot with kind of voicing the younger perspective yeah. on what we do and kind of helping bridge the generational gap, shall we say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for sharing those gifts. Yeah. All right. Anyone and else? <laughs> Anyone else feel called to mm -hmm. Laura? Mm -hmm. The obvious one I love to give is music and playing and sharing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That. Which music? Mm-hmm. And one I could work more on is I, I like making meals for people, but I just don't do it as often as Got I should, it. maybe. Yeah. So maybe try to do that more. Okay. Meals. That's a beautiful one. Thank you, Laura. Anyone else have ones that they want to share? Jane. So I, in the top card, I put, because my top gift, when I've done spiritual gifts, uh -huh. has been helps. Helps. So um, I put the food pantry, what I'm already doing. Yes. And uh, something I wish I had more of an opportunity to do is to be part of the music. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You have a gift of music. To be part of a choir. Yeah. Please. Yeah. 
Well, you are part of a choir. <laughs> the congregational choir. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, we could put that in planning. Think about a choir. Yeah. yeah. We have seats for them. We have choir. That would be cool, though. It would be awesome to be able to, like, maybe have choir practice and then have a core of people who know the music. And yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so now what you've done is bridged into the tech build, book building yeah, chapter so. of the later right. meeting. So that stick a pin in that and, and then pull it back out when we get to that point later this morning. Because right now we're looking at our own gifts. And Go ahead, Tina. For mine, I've got... Um, I do solo music at St. John's, but never at home. Uh -huh. So I would like yeah, to be able to sing. Yeah. Oh, when did I do it? When you have did. I given you music? Solo. At Which time? I don't remember do, ever doing it here. It was a while ago. Yeah, I do it at St. John's once a quarter. Um, and then the other thing is um, <laughs> I'm involved in recovery meetings, uh -huh. and there's a lot of people. Like when I went through grief share after my brother died, there are a lot of people that are really hungry for what we have. Hungry for, That yeah. don't know anything else. Like, you know, the Episcopalians drive me up a wall on a regular basis. Uh, but when you, when I need them, they're there. Yeah. You need a church. This is, you're going through something major, <coughs> this is not optional. I get people into churches. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else have gifts they want to share? Sure, I'll share. Go ahead, Donna. I think that what I've offered here is a, a sort of a creative, innovative perspective uh -huh. and thing. Creative, sort of Art, your artist yeah. gift. Yes. But maybe a little outside the box if I can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think what I love about that is it fits in heart, but it's it's also a, ha a hand and a thought thing. I think you, you mm -hmm. talk about it and you invite us into it, and then you also create things that are part of our worship environment. So thank you for yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I think what I'm curious about in the future, especially since our upcoming ECW retreat is going to yes. be really awesome. Yes, uh, it's going to be smoking. <laughs> uh, we're going to, I'm going to, I, I don't know whether I can say it yet because we haven't completely finalized it, but it's going to be But it's going to be cool. Sharing from the heart. Yeah. I'm getting some people up from LA to present the sharing from the heart. Oh, neat. Part of the convention, actually. Okay. That I Beautiful. I three workshops there. So, oh. That, so I see that evolving into, and uh -huh. for me maybe, is to help lead small groups in transparency and getting closer to one another. But I've yeah. never done anything like that before. And I know you probably will get to develop that gift set when you go to the small congregation spiritual tools yeah. workshop too. And I think our retreat's going to be doing that as well. Awesome. We're going to we're going to have a uh, opportunity to experience what these ladies have been doing since yeah. right around before COVID. And I've been attending their online groups. At yeah. Convention. Okay. So, so yeah. sharing that would sounds beautiful. Thank you, Donna. It's good to get a look at some of the things that have been in your pocket rumbling around and, uh, and coming out in some other context and bringing them home. So thank you for that. Sure. Go ahead, Christine. Uh, well, already music. Yes. Okay. Um, and the thing that I, it just popped into my head would be cat or dog sitting. Cat or dog sitting? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's super. You want to take Finn? <laughs> I'm sure. And that's super important because not everybody knows a handy neighborhood teenager these days, right? Yeah. yeah I, I had somebody that I didn't even know take care of my cat while I was gone. Oh. She was wonderful. And when I came back, uh -huh. my cat was like calm and <laughs> happy. Yeah. Oh. Calm and happy. Yeah, having good care for our animals. Exactly. Companions is beautiful. Thank you. I just finished doing that <laughs> sitting for Nancy Connor. How neat. I just want to check in with our online congregation. You're there, but you're also there, so I have to look both places. Do any of you have something that you would like to share um, with the congregation around gifts? You don't have to, but just don't want you to get uh, left on the side. Right. All the modest people. All the All modest people. And yeah. just, you know, like, wave your hand if you decide you, you, you put a hand up and we'll come back to you. Anyone else here in the room want to share something that they put up today? Yeah. I'll Go ahead, Greg. Uh, 
mine that I'm doing is uh, since I've been doing this for seems like forever uh -huh. is you know serving at the at the altar yeah mm -hmm. and uh, that had you know I was sitting here thinking okay how old are you and when did you start <laughs> doing this and yeah. you know I just kind of went you know yeah you know going on you know 60 years 60 so. years of serving at the altar yeah. wow so that's amazing And then, uh, then the opportunity came up to uh, <clears throat> serve this community, the church community, of uh, interacting with the with the, the Cub Scout troop and the Boy Scout yeah. troop. So I'm going to be taking over from these wonderful folk here as the the conduit between the scout yeah. group and the the chartered organization which is going to be st phillips so. yeah. Yeah. yeah that's I don't, I don't if everybody knows this but valerie has been our charter organization representative who connects us with our scout troops and now greg will be taking that so awesome. that's beautiful thank you and uh, then i think back to how long i've been involved in that kind of organization and i really want to just go because I started with the you know, as a scout when I yeah. was eight years old. Wow. wow. And then then just continued on through the different organizations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. helping out. So. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Those are the ones that I got up okay. there. Okay. Just put time. Time. Because whatever I'm doing, that's really what it involves. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the chanted or great, whether it's festival, yeah. whether it's feedback, whatever, it just, that's what I've got, that's, that's what I've been sure. Well, and I thank you for making that observation because I feel like um, the number one thing, like if you ask like, why did that crowd not share their food until that little boy did it, you're talking about a place where food may not have been abundant. but. In our world, the thing that keeps us from sharing our gifts the most, I think, is that perception that we don't have the time. And that, that there's so many demands on our time. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's a super important one. Thank you so much for, for bringing that up. And also for sharing that with us in all kinds of different ways. Any last observations before I pray? All right, um, first of all, I wanna point out that, look at how many gifts are here, just in this room, and, um, and look at how many everybody's thinking maybe they wanna be using that we're not quite getting a chance to use yet. So, and that was the eight o'clock or same thing. I'm gonna post these over the font, because of course, continuing to discern our gifts and that we've been given by God and how we want to share them and how God's calling us to use them in new ways is part of our life as baptized people. And so that's where we're going to put them. I think I'm going to leave them up there at least till the bishop comes on the 15th so that she can see them. And um, in the meantime, if you think of another one, feel free to grab a sticky note. Or alternatively, you know, if you have one down here and then you start using it, stick it up there. You know, it's these are living documents. So let me let us let me read the prayer. This is a great prayer because oh, you want to wrap it? Thank you so much. We've gone back in time. There we go. I know. I've forgotten about this. This is a prayer you've already heard this morning because it comes from Paul and his letter to the Ephesians. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever.